It is the NFL draft, and with the 13th pick in the draft, the Green Bay Packers have selected Lucas Van Ness, the defensive tackle from Iowa. We've got Locked on Packers host Peter Bukowski with us. I am Jordan Black, but first, Locked on NFL's draft coverage is presented by Ultimate Football GM. You think you can run an NFL franchise? Well, visit ultimate-gm.com to play the Ultimate NFL GM simulation game. Start your dynasty today. All right, Peter, that brings us to you and the Packers pick. Take us through this pick. Lucas Van Ness from Iowa. Kind of break it down for us. Um, What do we think of him? This is almost identical to what the Packers did in 2019 when they used the 12th overall pick on Rashawn Gary. We're talking about a Big Ten pass rusher with some some question marks about production and productivity on the field, but with absolute world-class athleticism at 6'5", 272, ran a 4'5", 840. That is the same 40 time Brian Branch ran, a safety who could be a first round pick from Alabama. He is an incredible physical specimen in the 93rd percentile for athletes at the edge position. And that is where Green Bay is going to play him. The thing that I think makes a lot of sense for Green Bay with this is they do not need him to play this year and be their number one pass rusher. That's what Rashawn Gary is going to be for when he comes off the ACL. And that's what Preston Smith is for as a veteran, someone who can give you some nice snaps. This is for how good he can be in 2024, how good he can be in 2025, just like when they made the Rashawn Gary pick. And last year before Rashawn Gary tore his ACL, he was on his way to a potential, maybe second team, all pro kind of season, certainly a pro bowl kind of season. So the Packers, they are obsessed with size, speed athletes. They always have been. They they seemingly always will be. And that is exactly what Lucas Van Ness brings. I mean, this is a guy whose nickname is Hercules for crying out loud. Like that is the kind of just alien level athlete that this guy is. That is always going to appeal to Green Bay. But you've got a different nickname for him. I I, I just, I like the Luke Ness monster. Just, I, I just... The, the name, it speaks to me in a different kind of way. I, I think Hercules, I think of the Nutty Professor and all that, but it's a, it's a different, it's a different thing. It's there's, there's gonna be a lot of nicknames for him. I, I, I'm telling you. Well, Peter, folks might look him up and, and see he, he never started a game at Iowa. What, how was he ready for the NFL? Why was this guy a first round draft pick? But walk us through that um, decision by Iowa, why that matters, why it doesn't matter. So Iowa is an old school program. They still start guys based on seniority. So he actually ended up playing starter snaps in terms of amount. Um, just isn't the official starter on the play sheet. He's still only 21 years old. That's another thing that Green Bay, they love to take young players. Rashawn Gary was young when they drafted him. Jordan Love was, Jordan Love is still 24 years old. He's been in the NFL for three seasons. Kenny Clark was 20 when the Packers drafted him. Randall Cobb in 2011, this is going back a little bit, was the youngest player in the NFL when he came in as a rookie. The Packers traditionally like these guys because history tells us it means you have a way to go up. You have this potential. He is someone who, even in limited reps, had nine sacks last year, and he didn't start. I think that tells you everything you need to know about where this is going. And again, he's not going to have to start for the Packers. And so they can bring him along a little bit slowly, get the pass rush repertoire up a little bit. And then in 2024, even by the end of of this 2023 season, you have Rashawn Gary out on the field who can convert speed to power as well as anyone in football to just run through your face. Um, This is another guy who will will run through your face. And so um, he's someone who could also play, um, I think he can play some defensive line rushed from the interior as a three technique, can play some five technique. So this is a guy who can play all over your front, getting him in young is a, a boon for the Packers. We know why he'll be an, an asset to the Packers, but what were your feelings on on taking him at, at, at this spot versus taking a skill position player here? Yeah, I mean, I would have I would have preferred a skill position player here. Jackson Smith, the Jigba, I thought was a top 10 kind of prospect. Clearly, the NFL disagrees um, because, you know, he, he has lasted well past the 13th pick. For Green Bay, so they must not be as infatuated with him as as I am, and some other people in the in the draft are. And so this this is one of those things where if you look at the history of the draft, if you want a pass rusher, a corner, a tackle, or a quarterback, you have to have to have to have to draft them in the first round. If you want a premium receiver, 
you don't have to draft him in the first round. Day two is the sweet spot for pass catchers, tight end, receiver. So while I thought there was a player that was worth taking in that spot at 13, I understand saying, here's the deal. This guy could be, and I think this is true. I think he might have the best physical tools of any pass rusher in this class, maybe excluding Jalen Carter. So if we're just going to talk about edge guys, just outside pass rushers, he probably has the best physical tool set of any of these players. The upside of that is pretty remarkable. And so I understand saying this, this one guy here who could be that elite, that helps us more than a Jackson Smith, the Jigba. I understand that, I guess. You get it, right? We're not in the room. Now, um, 10 more picks though, right? So there, there are options. What else does Green Bay have to do to make the 2023 draft a success? So I think th this is going to be one of those picks that will be judged after we see what happens tomorrow or potentially later tonight. Um, the, the Packers could certainly trade back into the first round and grab a pass catcher. We, we've seen these pass catchers are not going as early as we thought they would. So there could be at the end of the first round opportunities. The Packers have the 42nd pick that they got from the New York Jets in the Aaron Rodgers trade. They have the 45th pick, which is their pick. And so, as I said, the sweet spot with pass catchers is day two. If they come out of day two with Jalen Hyatt and Darnell Washington or Cedric Tillman and Sam Laporta, I think you're going to look at this, this Lucas Van Ness pick a lot differently than we do right now, which is exactly what happened last year, right? Quay Walker and Devontae Wyatt were the, were the picks in the first round, and a lot of Packer fans were like, oh, here we go again. And then they trade up for Christian Watson. They snag Romeo Dobbs in the fourth round, who turned out to be a terrific pick for them. They get Zach Tom on day three, who's, I think, going to be a day one starter here for Green Bay this year. So we always have to remember the draft is not just one day long, and we have to remember that it's a class, not just this one pick. Marathon, not a sprint, right? Exactly. There you go. Peter, appreciate it. For more on the Packers, you can uh, listen to or watch Locked on Packers. Um, that is part of the uh, Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Peter, thank you for your insight.